Hello, I'm Rice, and today I'll be discussing how to improve connectivity in DFO Global. I've noticed throughout my partying adventures that many times people would either lose connection or lag horribly. I've noted many people kept complaining about such issues as well, and some of you guys even suggested for me to do this guide too, and I decided I should get it out of the way as early as possible. So here we are. The two methods we'll be using to improve connectivity is port forwarding and switching to Google's DNS servers. Before I dive straight into the topic, I'd like to talk more about the conceptual reasons as to why port forwarding and Google DNS servers help. It shouldn't take more than two minutes, but if you just want to get straight into it instead, I'll include a link below. So let's talk about DNS servers. What are DNS servers? Well, it stands for Dynamic Name Servers and it helps resolve names into IP addresses. For example, if I ask for Google.com, a DNS server connects Google.com with an IP address for me. Google's DNS servers are faster than default ISP DNS servers and can help out with latency issues. Port forwarding is a different beast entirely though. Imagine your router as a nation's border patrol. Your computer is a nation and anything that wants to get into the nation will require a strip search by the router. And depending on his whim, the person getting strip search can be thrown out too without ever getting into the nation. By port forwarding you tell your router anything that uses door number 10 can be allowed within my nation without a strip search. The door number is the port number and this way you won't drop any connections. Some routers are so aggressive that they drop all packets from DFO instead of sending it to you, making you lag and create a ton of issues with other players. So by port forwarding you can increase connectivity and reduce lag overall. Anyway, enough of the conceptual. Now I'll be showing you how to configure it all. Know that I did all of this in one take and without any editing involved so I do not speak as smoothly or in control as I normally would otherwise. I figured it would be best to do this with a live demonstration and doing it all from scratch myself. That way you can see step by step what to do and how to do it. Anyway, hope you guys enjoy and I'll see you at the end card. Alright guys, let us go ahead and demonstrate exactly how to DNS server setup and how to port forward. Hopefully through me walking you through it step by step, you'll understand that it's not exactly overwhelming at all, in fact it's pretty easy. It just sounds really overwhelming, which is what we're about to change. Lo let's just go ahead and open up control panel. Know that I'm doing this complete live, so if I make any mistakes or stutter or anything, that is pretty much the reason why. So let us go ahead and open up control panel, and let us type a network in the search bar. Typing a network in the search bar should yield you Network and Sharing Center. Click on this and you'll come across a new screen and on the left hand side you'll see something called Change Adapter Settings. Click on this and you'll see a list of all your network adapters on your internet or actually on your computer. So the one you want is the one you're currently using for your network. The one I'm using is called Local Area Connection. Local Area Connection means it's an Ethernet connection. Wireless network connection obviously means it's a wireless network connection. N figure out which one you're using and then right click on it and click properties. You'll come across this window. The important thing about this window is to click on this internet protocol version 4. Don't bother with anything else here and then click on properties here again. Click on this will bring you to a new window and on this window is where you can set up your DNS server. We're going to set up and configure our DNS server to use the same one as Google's. So let's go ahead and do that. You're going to see obtain an IP address automatically checked off and you'll also see obtain DNS server automatically checked off as well. Click on use the following DNS server address instead and these two check or whatever these two text boxes should highlight for you. So let's type it in. So uh, Google's DNS server is just 8888 and 8 and the alternate DNS server for Google is just 888 four and four. We're done. Now all you have to do is click OK and you basically set up your DNS server as Google's DNS server. Just so you know, 
Google DNS server is superior to that of uh, ISP's DNS server, the default one that you get automatically from your ISP. So this should reduce latency and improve your connection overall. So now that we're done with that, let us go ahead and jump straight into port forwarding itself. Port forwarding is not that hard, but I'll, I'll show you why. People get really overwhelmed trying to figure it all out, and it really isn't that bad. So let us open up CMD first. We gotta figure out what our router's IP address is. Once we do that, we can get go ahead and get started on the port forwarding aspect of the program. So let us go ahead and type in ipconfig in cmd.exe, and you'll see a bunch of stuff come out. Most likely, you won't see as much as me, but if you do see multiple, then all you can do is find which one is your actual Ethernet or I should say wireless adapter or wired adapter. Mine is called Ethernet Adapter Local Area Connection, the same name as the previous slide where we went and figured out what to do with our DNS server. So what we want underneath here is our default gateway. Our default gateway is just a fancy word for our router and our default gateway's IP address is 192.168.1.1. Knowing this, we can go ahead and start setting up our actual ports. So we want to type in 192.168.1.1. What happens here is you're accessing your router itself, and your router basically presents you a page in which you can, can configure a lot of stuff. So, Using that, we can go ahead and configure our ports. Normally what happens here is you are asked for a username and password. I'm already logged in, so you can't see that on my page, but normally you get asked for a username and password. For Optimum, you can do this anywhere basically because they have their router page online itself. But most router pages don't have it online, so you have to access it inside your computer network itself. So. Let's go ahead and click on advanced settings and click on port management. This is where I can set up my port forwarding rules. Normally, your router will have different, oh no, thank you, will have different, uh, will have a different location for your ports. So basically, you'll have to look around on your page and figure out where you can set up and configure your port forwarding rules. Mine is just underneath here, but yours might be somewhere else, so keep that in mind. So let us go ahead and scroll down and you'll see port forwarding right here. All you have to do is add a port forwarding rule. Know that this is different for every single router. Well, some routers obviously will have the same configuration system, but a lot of other routers won't. So you might see something different. You'll see, oh, maybe you can type in a range of ports, which is really useful by the way. Or you can only type it one at a time, which is like how I'm supposed to do it. So over here, you just type in whatever port you want. For me, or for us I should say, we'll want 10,010, 10,011, all the way to 10,020. That's all the channel ports, by the way, for DFO. And you'll also want to type in 5,063. That's the party port. And the thing you want for the protocol, you want for all of them. Okay, so normally 10,010 to 10,020 you just want TCP and for 5,063 you want UDP for party But I mean you don't really need to be that specific you can just go ahead and type in all just to save you the hassle and, and once you do that you're good to go and let me just bring this screen to the uh, video page whoops to the video page and this is what all the ports are. I discovered this using Wireshark. Wireshark is a tool you can use to sniff packets. And I basically went into every single channel and figured out exactly what ports I need uh, in order to port forward. So it, it turns out that there's a lot of repeat ports. Castaway 6, uh, I should say Castaway C, and Gensi, for example, both use 10,015. Uh, 10, it's interesting, so I tried to look this up and it turns out that there's three servers, in fact, for uh, DFO. So in the East server, it's split up into three servers entirely, and it's interesting stuff. So anyway, you want to port forward 10,010 all the way through 10,020, and once you do that, you also want to port forward 5,063. Just pause the screen here and just basically jot this down. I'll probably copy and paste this in the description too if you need it. 
And what I did originally was I just used this tool in order to figure out exactly what ports we need for the new DFOG. It turns out there are several differences compared to the other versions, so keep this in mind. And uh, yeah, we're pretty much done. Hope this has been informative for you, and I will talk to you later. Before I go though, I think I'm gonna go ahead and grab a sub. How about you?